I don't know why I'm telling you all of this. I've been saying the same thing since it's happened. It's been non-stop for three weeks. You, the police, the journalists, hell, everyone. I'm still shaking and you guys just want to know more and more and more details about all of it. I just want to forget, but you won't let me. So, here we go again for the 17th time in three weeks. I remember everything as if I was still in the car. Matt, Jay, Dave, Peter, and I were squeezed tight in that Honda Civic. We were having a good time, though. We smoked a blunt at Jay's, and we played video games for a few hours straight before we decided to head out for some Mickey D's. We got our order from the drive-thru. It was maybe... 2 a.m.? Yeah, that sounds about right. About 2 a.m. We had long come down from our high, but... As my mother says, I'm a grown man. I need sustenance, even in the wee hours of the night. So, that's that. We were just having a good, regular guy's night out. We had just gotten our McDonald's when we decided, on the spur of the moment, to just go on a few hours road trip. It was innocent. Our mothers, well, they didn't really need to know. And I admit that at the moment... I didn't think she cared much. As far as she was concerned, I was sleeping over at Jay's anyway. Which was true, even though we decided to skip the whole sleeping part. So we were going to drive on the 24. But first, we needed to make sure no one fell asleep, so we pretty much ransacked every energy drink that we could find at the local convenience store. The cashier that night, he was a middle-aged guy. Now, I can't remember the name on his tag, but I'm pretty sure it was Dick something. Anyway, not like this is a detail that you'll remember when I'm done telling you about this everything but ordinary road trip. So we paid for our stuff and we got back into the car. We had no idea where we would be going. The plan was mostly to drive all night and get back home somewhere around 7. Before Jay's mom got up and freaked out when she realized that the five teenagers that were supposed to be asleep in bed aren't. Jay's mom, her name is Natalie, uh, she's a clean freak, so she would probably notice the five pairs of shoes gone from her entry mat. There's no way in hell she would miss that. Once we're in the car, we realize that we should probably refill the tank too. Mostly because if we ended up not having enough gas for our round trip, it'd really suck to call for help and look like little douchebags stuck on the highway. We get a few smaller bills out of our pockets and then we go inside to pay Dick for the gas and, well, then we were actually off. Now, it was about 2.30 in the morning when we got on the 24. And let me tell you, the 24 is pretty cool to drive on. I mean, I'm 17, but every road looks the same to me, especially since Utah is a pretty ordinary state. It's a long stretch of sand and rocks, and there's a few dehydrated trees, and there's not a lot of animals on the road except maybe lizards and rodents. Not a lot of vegetation, to be honest. The stretch we were on is practically desert. I mean, sure, there are other cars. Sometimes, but... As time passed, we saw fewer and fewer cars. I remember what we were talking about, too. Games, mostly, but... Well, we're talking about girls, too. Jay had been asked out by a girl a few days prior, but he hadn't given her an answer yet. He was debating going out with her because he didn't really find her all that attractive. She was nice, and he felt bad for not giving her a chance. Plus, he thought it was really gutsy of her to actually ask instead of waiting for him to do it. We all agreed it was ballsy, but we also all agreed that Jay could find her cuter girlfriend. So, we talked girls and video games and music and some other stuff like that. We also made fart jokes and Matthew nearly killed us with a bomb in the back seat. Hell, we actually thought he shit himself. But it wasn't anything that couldn't be fixed by rolling down the window. Although I was certain he crapped his pants. Everything was going fine. 
we were all having fun. You know, letting loose, just enjoying ourselves to the fullest at three something in the morning on the goddamn Route 24 in Utah. And it wasn't until we heard Dave say, Um, guys, did you see that? And he slowly pointed his fingers at the horizon. The car slowed down a little, and it took me a couple of minutes to adjust to the darkness before I could see it. It was running. I didn't know what the hell it was, because I couldn't see it from so far away. But it was running toward the road, that much we knew. It was about 200 feet away, and I could barely make out the silhouette in the moonlight. But it was moving very fast. And it was running in a way I'd never seen a human run. The thing looked bent forward, as if trying to soar through the air. Hell, its arms hanging behind. Matt even made a Naruto run-themed joke. We all laughed, but we couldn't ignore the fact that it was getting closer. I told Jay to drive faster. I felt panic rise inside me. I don't know why, but even though I couldn't completely make out what the fuck was running toward the road, I knew deep down that we shouldn't be staying there. I might not have said it loud enough because Jay didn't react at first. My friends were glued to their windows and the car had all but stopped at this point. They all stared at it, trying to figure out what the hell it was. I stared back as well and finally saw its form in the fullest. It had long, emaciated limbs dangling behind an incredibly bony torso. His legs were more muscular than the average human, and his hip bones looked sharp. Its skin seemed thicker on his legs as well. Whereas, I could make out every single rib in its chest. The skin of his legs almost looked like tree bark. But what had me screaming at Jay to start the car wasn't this horrific mess of a body. No, it was the creature's face in itself. Its eyes were the purest white I'd seen. They almost shone with the moon as the features of the creature became clearer. It didn't look like the face had skin either, so the slight luminescence of the beast's gaze seemed to reflect directly on what looked like bones. There were a mess of tangled, dirty, matted hair growing from the skull-like face. But the face in itself, it wasn't anything human. The jaw, well, the jaw extended the way a canine jaw looked like. But instead of dog teeth, the mouth was full of razor-sharp fangs of various lengths and sizes. There wasn't any coherence in the way the teeth had grown which only added to the nightmarish allure of the creature. It wasn't a nose, and I'm pretty sure the protrusions on the forehead were horns. But maybe they had been previously broken or something. They almost looked like they were oozing black sludge, which only stained the white of its skull-like face and got the messy hair around it to be even messier. At this point, I screamed at my friend to start the car and the beast howled at the same time. It was about 50 feet away. Jay pressed on the pedal and made the tire screech, but all the other four pairs of eyes were still locked on the approaching creature. I did feel it when we finally started racing down the hallway, but the inhuman howling escaping that creature's mouth drowned out any other noise around me. From my boys screaming to the sound of the engine, I could only hear the sound of this creature's screams, and believe me or not, I felt it as it got on the highway. Despite half its body looking quite dead and bony, I felt a tremor in the car as its heavy feet slammed on the pavement. Now, I want to say it was just my imagination, but as it started running towards us and dashing after the car, I couldn't ignore that every step was felt and heard, louder than my heartbeat which was pretty much ready to make my heart burst out of my chest. 
And so I started screaming at Jay to go faster too. But we were already driving a little over 80 miles an hour. Not that I cared at getting a ticket at this point, especially with that thing chasing after us. I barely had time to hear Jay saying to buckle our belt when Matthew was screaming too. I think he said like, holy shit guys, it jumped. Something to that effect. And jumped it did. It landed a few meters behind the car and all three of us who were watching in horror could only scream at Jay to drive faster. Within a couple of minutes, the thing was on us. Both of its skeletal fists slammed on the trunk, and we heard the metal bend. We felt the car's suspension trying to comp the attack, and Jay, thank God for his driving skills, managed to deal with the impact. We zigzagged a little on the highway and tried to put some distance between us again, but it ran even faster than the car and then rammed us on the left side. It felt as though it was trying to push us off of the road. Now, Dave, who was sitting on the left, had now unbuckled his belt and was pretty much trying to climb Matt and Pete's lap. There was a very visible dent on the left back door and the window was cracked. The beast slammed it again and the window shattered completely. We were all screaming, faster, faster, but Jay already had his foot down on the pedal. It slammed against the door again and reached a hand inside. Matt reached for the baseball bat on the floor, and waved it around harshly, slamming it against the hand coming inside and Dave accidentally. All of the thing's fingers were like bones and claws, with white silkworm hair growing from its grey-green skin. The moment the head entered the car, I smelled it. It smelled like someone forgot hamburger meat on the counter in 104 degree weather for three days. Rotten. It smelled rotten. On the last bat strike, we heard a definite agonizing howl. Matt managed to get it right in the knuckles. But as it pulled its hand away, it gripped at Dave's shirt. I twisted my neck and back to grip at my friend's leg. Pete and Matt did the same, and we kept him in the car by a hair. But in the attempt, the creature had ripped through his hoodie and skin. There was blood coming out from Dave's chest. We were all freaking out. All I could say was like, put pressure on it because that's what they say in the fucking movies, but... I was there watching my friend with his chest ripped open and blood soaking his clothes in the back seat. We didn't know how serious it was, and we didn't have time to worry about that considering the beast was still coming after us. And then it jumped again and landed on the roof of the car, just about going right through it. Its legs were actually in the car, and we could see its hands gripping at the hole in the metal, trying to open it forcefully. Just as if the car was a can of tuna. Jay said he had an idea and asked if all of our seatbelts were fastened. Dave fastened his as fast as he could, and once it was confirmed, Jay slammed his foot on the brakes. We had to have been doing over 80 miles an hour. We skid across the road and Jay tried his best, but eventually he lost control of the car. The monster was ejected as we were launched off the road. We did a barrel or two before landing back on the wheels. I could see it lying down in the middle of the road and I was in shock. Pete was in pretty good shape and he grabbed his phone out of his pocket and called the cops. It wasn't moving, but neither were we. The car was a total wreck and refused to start again. So we were all very anxious, hoping the engine would start before that thing woke up. Considering what it was doing, running at a high speed and slamming a car, we couldn't believe that it was there dead. Dave's voice kind of pulled me back to reality and reminded me that he needed assistance. We removed his hoodie and peeled the shirt off of his skin, and there were two huge, deep lashes on his chest, going from his left tip to his right armpit, and another one a few inches above it. It looked really deep. I could see the flesh and his blood oozing out. He had been losing blood for a while now, enough for all of us to worry about him. 
And then, all of a sudden, I heard the most reassuring sounds in the world, followed by the most horrifying sound in the world. Police and an ambulance noise, and then a guttering howl that seemed to come straight from the hottest pit of hell where they keep the worst demons. The beast was standing and staring at us, its soulless white luminescent gaze just ever-present. I could see blood and drool dripping from its open maw, and the blood of my friend still drying on its claws. It stared at us, and I could feel its hatred and anger. It was enough to make me want to curl up, and I felt my eyes sting, but instead of running towards us again, it limped to the other direction. And though I say it limped, it looked more like running with legs that aren't the same length. It was still surprisingly fast despite the broken bones. I watched it as it got away, and it only stopped to look back at us when the emergency service got us out of the car. I think I might have answered a few questions for the EMTs, but my head was still turned toward the horizon, fearing that it would come back and finish us off. Even in the ambulance and on the way to the hospital with Dave, I couldn't focus on my friend. I can only think about what we just seen and lived through. Dave lived, believe it or not, and he got 47 stitches in total across his chest and the lower part of his neck as well. And I just can't believe we all survived. <laughs>